Hey, are you a singles player who got roped into a doubles match and you're kind of nervous because you feel like a fish out of water? You know how to play singles, but you know you don't know how to play doubles. And you want to you want to do yourself proud out there. So I'm going to go through the top five biggest mistakes singles players make on the doubles court. So if that sounds good to you. Let's get started. Okay, mistake number one is your serving position. A lot of singles players, I notice that they stand over here because this is where you're comfortable serving. Well, that makes sense in singles because you serve the ball in and now you've got the court to cover on both sides. You can really break it in half and, and get to your spot. Now, if you're doing the same thing in doubles, you're thinking, well, I only have to cover half the court, but yeah, in doubles, they can, your, your opponents can really hit some great angles. So they can get you way off the court and hit a lot of short angles. So you want to make sure, you watch players play doubles, they mostly stand out here. Why is that? They stand out here, so now they are ready for about 80 to 90% of the balls that are going to come back at them cross court. Okay, and they have a chance for anything that's being hit short with an angle. You can just cover a lot more of your part of the court here in doubles if you're standing here. So make sure, just be aware. A lot of people are not aware that that's where they're standing when they go to start a match and it really is important. So make sure that you get over here to the, to the corner and hit your serves in. Okay, second biggest mistake that singles players make when they go to the doubles court, you know you don't want to get burned down the alley, right? And you probably might have heard some basic instruction like cover your line. Uh, even in singles when you play and you approach, you probably heard cover your line. So you're thinking cover your line, cover your alley. So you know that your job is to not get past here. So a lot of singles players will play too conservative and they'll be right here to try and guard the alley. But really, good doubles teams, you know what they do? They dominate the middle. And you're probably not gonna hear this a lot. It's okay to get past sometimes down the alley. You want to get past sometimes down the alley. That means they're being more aggressive. So what you wanna do is when you're playing uh, doubles, you want to make sure, you want to stay in the position that with a split step and a hop forward and, and just one move, that your racket can get across the middle net strap. If you can do that, then you're a threat at the net. If you can't do that, see if I'm here, look how long it's going to take me to get to the middle. I'm never going to poach on a ball. I'm not going to poach the entire time if that's how long it's going to take me. Because remember, that ball's hit, it's gone. So what you need to be able to do is be in a spot like this. Now, don't worry about getting past down the alley because if you're here and you see a serve go out wide, right, all you need to do is just kind of like move your shoulders. See, I move my shoulders here, split step, take one hop out, one, look at that. I'm covering half the alley really, really quickly. And then the other thing is if I'm here and now I see the ball going weak across the middle, I'm going to move out here with this leg out and across, boom, right there, I've poached successfully and gotten across the net strap. If you can get to the net strap, you're basically getting a nice solid cross court ball, you're already there. So you can really be a threat at the net by just covering and being a little bit different spot. Okay, so let's get to mistake number three doubles players make when they play singles. Okay, so here's a big mistake that, that singles players make when they play doubles and that is when they're hitting their shots, whether they're at the net or they're at the baseline, it doesn't matter, I see them do this a lot. They're trying to hit great shots and in doubles, this it sounds weird, you actually don't want to be hitting great shots. What you're trying to think about is always setting up your partner. If you want to win a lot of doubles matches and especially if you want to be invited back to play doubles, you want to be thinking about setting up your partner. The quickest way not to get an invite is to try and be that rock star who's always trying to hit winners down the line. And if you're changing the direction down the line, cross court, down the line, cross court, you keep doing that, what, what your partner has to do, what you're taught to do in doubles is to follow the ball, okay, is to get in front of the ball so you can close off angles. So if you hit one over there, your partner's going to move there, right, and then the next shot goes over there, 
Now they've got to run over there. So now you're having your partner moving back and forth and, and they just feel completely lost and overwhelmed and eventually they're going to get picked on because you're going to expose them. They have to keep following all your shots and your shots are going here and then there and here and then there. Eventually they're going to leave open a gap. The opponents are going to see that and they're going to attack your partner or hit a winner by them. And you might even think that it's their fault when in reality it's your fault. Okay, mistake number four. I know that you might not feel comfortable serving volleying. And, and I'm not even going to say that your mistake is not serving volleying because maybe you're just not a natural serving volleyer and it's something that you would need a little more time to work on. I do think if you're going to play some doubles matches, you want to get comfortable serving and volleying, okay? Because a lot of points are going to be won at the net in doubles. But what, what happens, and it kind of goes back to the last mistake I was making, because you are a singles player, you might have the best ground strokes, especially for singles. You might have the best singles ground strokes out there. There's a difference between doubles ground strokes and singles ground strokes. And so you might think, well, none of these, my opponents here don't have really good ground strokes, so I'm going to serve the ball in. I'm going to stand here and just crush, okay? And that might work against some teams, but against a lot of teams, you're going to be making too many mistakes. And also really good teams who are good at the net they love the pace so if you're just crushing balls they're gonna get on the net the ball's gonna rise over the net they're gonna get a lot of volleys at their chest and again they're gonna be picking off your partner and if your partner's getting picked on you might understand that oh the reason they got picked on is because of me but sometimes you might just think well they're just picking on my partner but they're picking on your partner again because of you if you're serving and then staying back a lot of doubles teams are going to notice that and they're going to attack you they're going to hit off pace shots and come on in your temptation is going to be to crush the ball at them and overwhelm them with power because you're seeing that their strokes are like this and like that and you're going to think well I've got superior strokes because I look like Roger Federer when I hit but I've seen a lot of people have awesome ground strokes get totally schooled in doubles from people who don't even have ground strokes who just chip every ball they'll chip come on in so what you've got to understand is you've got to understand the right times to rip you definitely I'm not telling you never to rip but you've also got to find times to then dip yeah, actually the Bryan brothers talk about this you know where, where they're coming in a lot of times your first passing shot you want to dip it at their feet hit the ball over the net and have it come down here that's a big thing you want you want double teams volleying up okay if they do a good job and they establish net position don't try and crunch through them throw up lobs you got to be if you're going to play doubles you got to be ready to throw up a lot of lobs and doubles okay and if you can just get the lob a little past the service line unless you're playing high 50 tennis barely anybody can put an overhead away so remember that when you're going out there okay the fifth and final and biggest mistake that singles players make on a doubles court is that they don't connect with their partner. They're so used to playing singles by themselves that they don't realize that they're now in a team event. So keeping to yourself and trying to figure out all the problems that are going on the match yourself is a huge mistake. You, know, you might be thinking, well, I'm just trying to concentrate. I'm just trying to figure out how to win for our team. You know, I'm, do I'm doing my job. You know, your job is to connect with your partner. It is the most important thing to do and not to tell them what to do. If you're, if you're looking at your partner and going, well, I've got better strokes than my partner. I'm a better player. I should be telling them what to do. That's communication. No, that's not it. You want to lead by following. And I always bring up this story. I got to play with the great Mark Woodford, one of the best doubles players ever in the history of tennis. Like, that's not an overstatement. It's just a fact. And so I got to play with him at a fantasy camp, okay? Certainly wasn't in a professional tournament. And of course I was nervous, and right away he started to lead by following. He had me serve first. He asked me where I like to serve, where are my favorite serves. He would always ask me what I like to do, what I felt comfortable doing. That could kind of let him know my game, what I like to do, so he could then adjust and play his game. Very, very important. If you also notice, in between every point, 
doubles players always come together. They'll even have like a little conversation like this where they're whispering or they'll give each other a little fist bump. It doesn't need to be long, but it needs to be constant and consistent. If your partner is serving, you want to think of yourself like a catcher, like they're the pitcher, you're the catcher, you're the one guiding them, so all the time you're running to them and kind of talking out little strategies, little pump up messages to each other. You have to connect or else it's not going to go well. So those are the top five mistakes singles players make on the doubles court. So if you do have a match scheduled, watch this video a couple times, take some notes. I promise if you follow these five steps, you're going to play much better than if you didn't watch this video and take my advice. So